guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, a lot of the comments that I get in the videos that I post lead me to the material that I present to you. And a lot of the comments that I've seen uh, is that there's a lot of worn out machines out there. Tail stocks anyway. I get a lot of comments, oh, I can't drill because my tail stock is out of whack. Well, I'm going to show you how to overcome that. I don't care if your tail stock is a total piece of junk or laying in the parking lot. I'm going to show you how to drill a, a nice true hole on your lathe. At least I'm going to show you the setup for it. I may not actually do it, but I'm going to show you the setup that you can apply to your machine and get past the old junky tail stock that doesn't work or is way out of center. Uh, the other thing I he see a lot is when you invert a tool or use an exceptionally small tool, you have a hard time getting your tool with a quick change tool post back on center, especially when you invert a tool for like the inverted threading that I do. A lot of guys say, well, you know, I can't, I run out of adjustment with my nut. Well, I've made little attachments for my tool posts, tool holders, to overcome that, and I'll show you what they look like as well. Let's take a walk out to the machine, take a look at the tool holder. Okay, guys, well, this is the video that's for all you guys that have always said, my tail stock is so worn out that it's just never going to happen. I can't drill a straight hole, can't get it on center. Well, you know what, if you have a machine that spins and you have a carriage that moves, there's no reason you can't drill a hole. Just move the drill to the tool post. Make yourself a little attachment that looks like this. Naturally, this is going to be a solid block. And when you set this up initially, it is very important that you tram the outside of this block with an indicator against the movement of the carriage to make sure that this is zero. That way whatever bushing you put in here, whatever drill, whatever form tool you put in here is going to be on center or plain or true to the axis of the spindle. Now as far as height is concerned, you can put an indicator in your spindle and track the inside of this. If the outside is zero and the inside is zero, then you are on center and you can now even power feed with your carriage to drill a hole. Now how are you going to get this hole in there? Well that's easy. You have collets, you have a chuck. Put the drills, put the collets, put the reamers, whatever, in the chuck and feed the carriage right into it. Machine it right on center. Just do not change the height of this tool after you've done that. This then becomes a dedicated tool for that particular operation. Naturally if you don't have a bunch of these laying around, then indicate it every time you put it in or just leave it on the side. If you do have a tailstock chuck with a taper shank on it and you're not using your tailstock because it's a piece of garbage well then knock that shank off that drill chuck and get a straight shank and machine your block to accept that. The other beautiful thing like I said is you can power feed with the carriage now in and out. It works very well. I use these for form tools, I use these for boring bars and these sleeves that I've made for my sets they're simply engaged in the block. Now I can use whatever size adapter, collar, drill, reamer, whatever in my sleeve inside my master block. The master is a one inch bore. These are one inch OD. Very standard. And the size on the ID, well that's up to you whatever you're putting in there. This will solve the problem of having a tailstock that does not cut on center. Do it this way, you're going to like it. Check it out. If you've ever had the opportunity to use a tool upside down in your tool holder or a tool that's too small and you run out of adjustment vertically when you install your tool, you need to make one of these. Just a simple piece of aluminum. It's a no-brainer. One tapped hole. Everything else is about as meatball as it gets. And let's show you how that fits.
tighten it down, lock it off. You can still access all the screws on the top of the tool holder. There is a flange on it so that it can find its position every time. And this little screw now becomes your stop screw that engages the top of your tool block. You're no longer dependent on this because this runs out right at this surface. So now that you have something else on there, you can raise the tool up much farther than you could ever raise it up with this thumb nut simply by making one of these little attachments. It works real well. It has saved my butt a hundred times. Try it. I think you'll like it. Okay guys, well for everyone that is going to leave me a message that says, hey, can I have a sketch on that little riser block? I don't have a sketch on that little riser block. I just threw it together. As a matter of fact, it was probably one of the dumbest things I ever made that I kept for an incredibly long time. Take a piece of aluminum and slide it to the size of your adjuster nut OD thread. Make sure it protrudes inboard of the dovetail far enough and just position your screw accordingly so that it goes down and hits one of the solid surfaces. It's a no-brainer. Just make sure that's nice and tight from the thumb screw on your tool post. Simple. Anyway, that's all I got. It works very well. If you don't have one, make one. And for the left and right, they will be different. So whatever you configure, if you could configure one for left and right, wonderful. I believe the ones I have are configured strictly for boring and not for turning. So be that. Anyway, that's all I got. Hope you can use it. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.